After being in business since the year 2009 and working for myself and coaching cleaners to build their cleaning companies, I over and over keep seeing one mistake that keeps repeating itself. And because of that, a lot of companies go out of business. You could be searching and possibly considering to start a cleaning business and trying to avoid all of those pitfalls. Or perhaps you're one of those cleaners who started a cleaning company a year or two ago, but you just keep noticing that your account keeps shrinking despite of the fact you keep selling the jobs. Well, in this particular video, we're going to outline one number one mistake that actually kills a lot of companies and tools and knowledge that you need, including the tools that'll help you to avoid so you can keep writing your prosperous journey and keep going up in your success and building your successful business. As a cleaners, this is what happens, right? You are a cleaner and let's say you sold a house cleaning job for $150. It's a bi-weekly service cleaning and to, to this customer. So you've been doing the work yourself and you've been getting $150. Not bad, right? Let's say you worked five hours or so when you break it down based on hours, that's decent. However, at some point you can only do X amount of jobs because at some point you need to move yourself and put yourself in this middle bucket where you are now overseeing the jobs and your energy as a business owner goes towards creating more jobs so you can hire more people. And this is where mistakes happen. At some point as cleaners, we have more jobs coming in that we can physically do it. And this had happened to me as well. And to a lot of people that I've helped, coached, mentored, and or learned from. And what happens is, so now when you have more jobs coming in, you start thinking in your head is like, okay, so let me just bring someone else to do it because you don't want to turn the work down. Last thing you want to do is say no to an income, a guaranteed job, especially if it's a referral customer. So then you need to start giving your jobs to someone else because then you can bring in more jobs. More jobs will create more work for your employees and staff and subcontractors. However, you're charging the same 150 from these customers. And what happens here is you are getting 150 and start paying them $150. But at some point you notice that your salary and your advertisement expenses, insurance, lease, car payments, driving, your rent, etc., is not being paid. So the problem is, which happens here to here is a lot of us don't include overhead expenses. And if you've guessed it, then you totally right. If there is a way how you calculate your overhead expenses, then let me know because I'd be extremely thrilled and it'll help the community. So overhead expenses are something that you cannot see, meaning they're not tangible. So you know your guy needs to get paid $20 an hour, let's assume, and he or she works six hours for this project and it's $120. So then you only have $30, but your $30 now are not enough to cover your overhead expenses. And at some point you're going to bring in admin insurance and your expenses will go up for advertisement, legal teams, you start buying equipment and etc. uniforms, all that stuff needs to be accounted and calculated for. And this is when you in collaboration with your accountant comes into hand. We know that there are two ways how to mainly process, uh, bid the jobs per job or usually a score footage formula and or hourly. And you estimate how much time it takes a person to do the job or a team to do the job and you break it down based on hours. So if you keep going at $20 for a person that you intend to pay $20, then you are not including the overhead that pays for your salary. We have a calculator online that we put together. I'll put it down in the link. And this was the intent of this, why I put this together. However, it is not to be used as a sole guide. This is for your health check. So when you figure out your overhead expense and the calculator will help you because you literally punch in the numbers that you want, the um, insurance, how much you pay per year, a lease of the office, your equipment maintenance, etc., And then it'll tell you how much in dollars you should be tagging along. So then let's say it's $20 an hour for a person that you'd like to pay and your overhead is like comes to $5, then you know $25 an hour is your cost to do the work. So then on top of that, 
then you put your markup or margin however much profit you'd like to do because here you covered your employee or subcontractor expenses plus your overhead and overhead needs to be broken down let's say you come up with twenty thousand dollar overhead a year then you can apply this twenty thousand dollar overhead to two hundred fifty dollar job which makes no sense so you just break it down and it comes from a drip a drip a drip from there this way you will come up with the total sum so that twenty five dollars then you mark it up and whatever your market allows then you can mark it up what makes sense as well and you want to coordinate those prices with your financial professional if you're bidding on a square footage basis then you already have to incorporate that overhead per square feet then you know the building square footage and depending upon the service you do then you got your net square footage price plus the overhead and then once you have that then you put your desired margin and markup and then you sell the job and when you do the shopping for the pricing you don't want to be the most expensive guy or you don't want to be the lowest guy you want to be somewhere in between to know the market price you at some point you will need to do a market research and see what other companies around you are charging if you appreciate the content like this please put a thumb up because it really lets me know that what i'm doing is helping you and i'm genuinely trying to get a lot more cleaners to be successful so they they us the cleaners we now work on our businesses but not inside of our businesses the intent is to make us not glorified cleaners but actually business owners so then you can invest in other things if you have a different way to calculate overhead expenses please share that also if you see as a business owner another mistake that a lot of other businesses do that hinder them let me know perhaps there's a knowledge that i can share put it together that will benefit the community again the link will be down below thanks for watching and see you soon